<laughs> and we're live. Welcome everybody to our new location. Uh, sexy, sexy Monday night. Ooh. Ooh, it's the start of the week and the start of my dreams. I don't know. I'm really <laughs> stoked to be here. <laughs> Um, yeah, as Sean was saying, we've now moved to Mondays. This is now our new home uh, for main campaign. Um, we're so excited to do this on Monday nights. And what this means for us is that means we get to keep playing live um, rather than having to jumble a whole bunch of schedules. It allows us a lot of flexibility with us. And it means that we get to keep doing this cool thing live for us and for you on the internet. So um, yay for Mondays. Um, uh, this episode actually is pre-recorded because, you know, schedules change last minute. Um, but uh, granted, we're pretty sure that there are going to be some pretty fun raids that are going to come in tonight and we will shout them out when they come in. We will do our best to shout out the raids uh, right on time. Yeah, uh, we're live as in we have a pulse. Like yes, we are yes. alive. Sorry, yeah, I missed uh, okay. We are alive. <laughs> it's Monday night and I'm breathing. I'm digesting some yogurt. My homeostasis <laughs> is off the charts, or should I say right in the middle of the chart i'm feeling really adequately healthy right now um i will i'm i'm definitely in the chat right now so uh, i will be saying hi to you um streaming this for you and a couple of us might be there as well so please come say please come hang out and watch the show uh it will be great i'm gonna dive into some announcements here um speaking to you from some time in the past Ooh. um but something coming up in the very very near future that is very exciting our charity stream benefiting planned parenthood is happening in two days Days from now, this Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, that is July 13th. Uh, we're so, so excited to bring this to you and to raise some funds uh, to keep bands off of our bodies. Uh, we are doing a stream train uh, with the wonderful folks over at the Red Hair Inn. So they are going to be streaming from 5 to 8 p.m., um, also benefiting Planned Parenthood. And then they're going to come over and join in with us uh, at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So it's going to be a delightful, delightful event. Uh, the uh, uh, title of this one is called Breaking Point. It's a good old fashioned prison break. Um, and I'm not sure these are good characters. I'm just, maybe, maybe there should be in prison for a reason. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, this is an in canon uh, one shot set just before the Dawn War on a continent far, far away. Um, I'm going to be in the DM seat and we have a stellar cast. Uh, we have some some wonderful folks coming back. Uh, Shelby, Wish Warlock is coming back. Taryn, uh, Val Rook. Um, Pond, of course, the wonderful Pond plays. Jade, who is Jade Valkyrie here online. And April Stiletto DM, who are we are very, very excited to all have back. And we are welcoming someone new as a guest, uh, Kayla. Um, she goes by Time Lord's Wife uh, here online. Um, so, and she's a streamer and TTRPG performer and all that kind of good stuff. So we're super, super stoked to have her. You can hit exclamation point charity in the chat right now to find all the information and the link to donate will be live on Wednesday. So please, please, please um, come by Wednesday because we have some fantastic giveaways. I love that I get to say this. Our friends at Critical Role, um, our wonderful friends over at Critical Role have sent us a care package uh, for giveaways um, and I can show you. So we'll have two giveaway packages for you. Some of the fantastic things include the Ukatoa board game. Ooh. Uh, include the fortune's favor dice scroll like dice scroll it's like a dice tray and dice case um like the cobalt soul journals i've also got one oh so crinkly the bailey's bag of wonders this is the extra large side size for all of the dice uh there is also um, a set of yasha dice uh, as well as a camping mug um uh, one of the limited edition sketchbooks, uh, the Critical Role Critter Dad Hat, um, and a couple other things in there. So we're super, super stoked. And for every dollar you donate, you get one entry into the giveaway. There will be two giveaway packs for you. Um, from Thank you to the wonderful folks over at Critical Role for sending those to us for this wonderful event. So please come hang out with us. It's going to be a good time. Uh, okay, moving on forward, you will also notice that we are one person down. Yes, indeed. Adam is on vacation in Scotland for a month. Uh, so it will be uh, the five of us hanging, holding it down for the month, which also means that there will be no Exalted and um, no Rage Saga and uh, on hold for G GM Roulette this month. But all of those wonderful shows will be back in August. So we're going to take some time, enjoy the sunny summer days, and you can come hang out with us at our Saturday world building streams and right here now on Monday nights. It's delightful, which is kind of fun because we used to stream Saturdays and Mondays back in the very beginning. Those were our two days when yeah. we were streaming two days a week. We streamed Saturdays Pandemic and Mondays. Pandemic was a wild time. It was a wild time to be alive and everything comes full circle. So we are back with our original schedule. 
Um, big thank you to our sponsors, Legendcraft, as well as the wonderful folks at Sirenscape because epic games require epic sound. Uh, we have some partners in Legend Keeper. They're a wonderful, amazing, amazing uh, tool for uh, DMs to um, allow you to do a lot of planning. And you can share some stuff with your players. So you can type exclamation point Legend Keeper in the chat for more of that. Love as always to our dice goddess Keisha at fairy dragon underscore dice, our campaign artist Tiana Kovacevic at Mr. underscore March Marston. We also have merch. We have a fantastic Discord. Everyone is so lovely over in Discord, so please come hang out. And we have YouTube with over 1,750 hours of content. Uh, so please come hang out with us on YouTube. Give us a follow over there, um, which is awesome. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing to us. Don't forget to re-up your subscriptions as they don't roll over every month. You also get one one free Twitch sub with your Amazon Prime. So if you want to give that to us, yay, good for you. Thank you. Um, you're also, um, we're also just so grateful to have you here uh, supporting the show, telling friends about it and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, before I jump into our programming, Len, are you doing anything on your channel this week? Yeah. So I just did the streamathon. I went for six days. You did. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things we unlocked was me taking all of this community sims I made and putting them all in one house and trying to play that through. I currently have, I think, 28 sims in one house. Oh, my God. Um, no, I saw you. I saw you build the house. The house was beautiful. The house is really beautiful. I have also made people's pets. I hate having pets in the sims. A Explain. lot. I never have pets. Explain why? Yeah. Oh, it's because they uh, get really sad. No matter like how much attention you give them, they get really, really sad. And then they just like run away or they get really dirty. And then your Sims are just really sad. And I'm like, I don't even fucking like, like this pet. It doesn't do anything. Just like real pets. And then <laughs> uh, also Lexi, one of my friends and mods who I turned into a Sim. I didn't have the werewolf pack when I made her Sim. I now have the werewolf pack. So I will be going to turn Lexi into a werewolf at some point. And you're releasing I, Lexi I into question. the house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also I, have a vampire in the house, though. So. Can, can the pets become vampires and or werewolves? I don't think so. No, I don't. Can think so. werewolves also become vampires? No, I don't think okay. there's hybrid. That's devastating. And then I think I also, un they also unlocked me cosplaying Mish. Um, and a wonderful community member of mine uh, ordered me a silicone cat snout with whiskers. So I'm just waiting for that to arrive. And then I will yeah, be cosplaying fast. as my cat. <laughs> oh. Yes, uh, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Len. Oh, yeah. wow. Nice so, yeah. so uh, go hang out with tossed. Len in their channel um one of our mods will pop a, sh a shout out or myself in the chat right now um please go follow len on their wonderful channel um adam does, uh go ahead it does say in the terms of service yanis you are right you will get tossed because in the terms of service you did agree not to do an affront against god uh, <laughs> oh, which yeah. i think that's kind you're gonna be borderline is what i'm saying yeah. I don't Just, know. We'll see. We'll see. And we found these like it was haunting. We found a bunch of silicone oh. like animal pieces. I'm gonna send you some real quick. <laughs> We've been I, I made trip. the pussy joke, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Um, we are, uh, we are our wonderful Adam, uh, also streams. You can find him at AD Lucasa and Cody, our fantastic producer also streams at Cody VM. So please go follow them as well. Uh, for us, for programming this week, we have the charity stream on Wednesday, 8 PM Pacific standard time. Please come hang out with us and donate to Planned Parenthood because shit's bad y'all. Um, so we gotta, we gotta send those funds their way. Um, and then we are back on Saturday for some world building. I had a awesome time uh, with the community on Saturday night. Um, we've been doing a lot of homebrew races at the moment. Uh, we built a volcanic Goliaths last night, uh, as well as a, a new snake folk race called Herpetalia. Um, and uh, yeah, we did. We're having a great time. So please coming out with us 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time as always. And then of course, Mondays for main campaign. So lastly, whether you are new with us tonight or you have been with us for ages, thank you so much for your support. We love you immensely. And thank you for hanging out at our table. We hope you feel super welcome here. Cody, roll the clip. Roll the clip. Roll the roll clip. The clip. <laughs>
Ooh. Wow. Uh. Um, what a journey we were on in that one minute. Uh, <laughs> for those of you just joining us tonight, <laughs> sorry. Last week, Blackwater made their final preparations before heading to Manta to confront the Matron of Vengeance. When they arrived, they were attacked by Cordelia alongside two negative energy giants, and the body of Softly was thrown to their feet. As they battled, the Revenant Nepenthe received sending, where she discovered that the Matron had in fact arrived at the Ziggurat, intent on destroying the conduit by which the Titans were strengthening the material plane. They just managed to teleport away from Manta and arrived to see the utter devastation. A number of emissaries of the Dawn had been massacred, and this included Cassian Skysinger, Kamea's uncle. As Blackwater rallied, they faced their most difficult opponent yet, and Callie and Finnan were both killed in battle. Before Letters managed to use the power of gravity to pin the Matron down, and Nepenthe banished the Matron as the avatars of Nephthysicat, Melora, Arathis, and the binding life web between the party dragged the Matron back to the negative energy plane to be locked away for good. We pick up as the battlefield has gone quiet. Before a burst of rainbow light spreads across the sky, the rifts sealed, the dawn prism glows with an iridescence. And that is where we pick up. As you see what remains of the body of Callie, her left side nearly gone. Her left leg is gone and most of her left arm. Her body has been partially vaporized. You can see her wedding ring lies intact and undamaged where her hand would be, glowing. Finnan's body lies on the ground and you can see purple crystals are starting to spring from the ground around him and beginning to cover his body like a cocoon. And you can see in the hole in his chest where the uh, armor had been pierced, the skin beneath is still hot and the crystals have fused over the wound where his heart had been taken. You look around and see each other. As the dome had come down, Nepenthe's shadow form still there flickering as it fades. Nepenthe, I need you to make your final death saving throw for me, please. So I'm assuming that when the matron left, did the amulet shatter? At this it point. did. Okay. So Nepi's shadow form, you you would hear this shattering sound as the skull of the raven on her hip just crunches, um, the artifact breaking, and the shadows kind of whip off and the shadow form decreases. Um, I immediately fail two death saves and am forced to make a third. So I'm going to make my last death save. Oh my God, I'm gonna be sick. That's a four. That is a failure. Yeah. As you watch as the shadow form fades, you see Nepi's body convulse and go limp. Kale and letters. You are currently the only two standing on the battlefield still alive. As you watch Kokanee run across the battlefield, you've never seen him move so fast as he rushes to Nepenthe's side. You see as he starts looking through her pockets and grabs a handful of diamonds and shoves them in her mouth. Before we go through the revivification, this is the first time I've died um, since I drowned when I received my prophecy when I was young. Do I see her? As your life is extinguished, you feel a falling sensation as if you're landing into water and sinking. 
and you see that cat-like face just above you, just above the water, kind of shimmering. And you feel yourself suspended in the water. Can I see her? Like my eyes are open and I can see her? Mm -hmm. She's just above the water at the moment. Hello, Your Grace. Hello. Thank you for giving part of yourself time and time again. I have only done what is necessary. It's strange. I, being here now, there is no part of me that wants to stay dead. Feel a peace, true peace, and yes. what a gift that is that you give them, regardless of where their souls may go or what happens to them pain or bliss or nothingness, but a moment peace yes I'm afraid it is only a moment for you I know and you watch as her paw kind of reaches down and as it comes through it turns into a hand that extends out and takes your hand I take them and you feel yourself be pulled up through that water as you breathe that first breath of life, as you both watch Kokani cast revivify as Nepenthe wakes up. Hi. Hi. Sorry, we don't have time for this. I cast fly on the both of you, and I just throw Kokani in the direction of Finnan, and I throw Nepi in the direction of Callie. Let go, go, wait. go! I can't. Why not? The banishment took my magic. Kokani, how you doing? Come on, we need diamonds. How you, you got it in you? I think it's been too long. Fuck. Letters, I can do it. Tomorrow. It will be a night. I have to sleep. For the two of them? Yes. I will need to resurrect Kelly. A large ritual. We will all need to be involved because her body parts are gone. If I tried now, there will be vital organs missing, and she would die. Finnan, it has been too long for revivification, and I do not have the magic right now to bring him back. Kokani does run over, and you watch as he casts gentle repose on him. All right. It also looks as though, as you you can see, Callie's mother is kind of still kneeling next to her, her wings kind of extended around what is left of her body. And you can watch as she also has cast Gentle Repose. I would stand up. Have Kokani help me up. Comes back and kind of lifts you under the arm. We will be safe here. She is gone. She is banished. But we will have to sit at night with them. I All wish right. that was not the case. What's the state of the Titans? You see, on the pedestals as you look over, there are only three Titans, or four Titans present at the moment. You see as the 
glowing forms that have shrunk down to fit on these smaller pedestals. As they walk down the ziggurat, you see as they hit the ground, they begin to grow into their larger forms. You see Grumbar looms large as he you feel the ground kind of shake beneath you. As he walks around beside, you see Akadi kind of takes off into the air. The clouds begin to move and part. And you see Ubtau slithers down and around, shrinking into that smaller form. And you watch as Garrix takes off, hovering just above the ziggurat and begins to fly away off onto the horizon. Does not look like Astitia is there anymore. Was she there? She was. I still have her mark, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna reach down. I'm gonna touch the, the marks on my legs. Mm-hmm. Thank you for what you did. I hope you get to go home. And I will do everything to make sure that that happens. You hear the voice of Grimbar close by. She has already gone home. And he kind of gestures his head toward the ocean just beyond. Good. Good. Kayla would um, make his way over to Callie's body. Um, is the Sending Stone still around? You can see the Sending Stone and her wedding ring are glowing. I would take the Sending Stone. Okay. Just, we've we've got her. We're gonna we're gonna fix this. What do you mean, fix this, Kale? She is temporarily away. You promise me you'll bring her back? If I have to go get her myself. It goes quiet. I'll put it back with Callie. You watch as her mother kind of scoops her up tenderly. She picks up the ring, places it in her other hand over her chest, and she flies her over to the base of the ziggurat. Um, can I go over to Finn? Mm-hmm. I just want to take, is he complete, completely encased in the crystal? Not completely, no. Okay. It's just kind of at the edges of his body. And his heart is gone. No, his heart came back as he was uh, um, reincarnated. Right, that's correct. But the wound that was there where the scar would be, as now you can see there is almost like sericite over top of it. I know what that looks like. Okay. I would, um, I would call Kokani over. Actually, I, I am not strong enough right now to do it. I would call letters over properly. And I know I'm generally stronger than Kokani is. Letters comes over and puts a hand on, uh, 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 Nappy's back and just gonna put 10 points of lay on hands into you. 
Thank Sorry you. about throwing you earlier. I just... No, you don't have to apologize. If I could, I would. It will be the longest night. We should find somewhere to take rest. I will need to sleep. Kokani, where have you been sleeping? Uh, I haven't really. Is Magrin or Serpentis around? Yeah. You can see Magrin and Serpentis are very delicately um, collecting the bodies of the emissaries of the dawn. And they're also bringing them over to the ziggurat. All of them dead? Most of them. Rom is uh, stable, but unconscious. I would run over to Rom. Yeah. And I'm going to put... Um, is there anybody else that is unconscious at this point? Uh, no. Cassian is dead. Arturo is dead. Itun is dead. And the two Aladrin of Cora, uh, Corellin and Sehanin are also dead. I would uh, put uh, a second level and a uh, first level cure wounds into Ram. Uh, so he gets, or sorry, they get max healing. Uh, on that. So that is going to be 2d8, 3d8, which is 24, technically plus 10, so 34 yeah. points. So you see their arm had been severed pretty much at the shoulder. Um, and then the, the wound has since cauterized with that like electricity that you saw kind of surrounding their body as their eyes kind of flutter open. Easy. Easy. I've got you. Is it over? Yes. Good. Is she gone? Yes. Good. I'm going to go back to sleep. Let us at least get you somewhere where that is safe to do so. Not out here in the open, all right? Hmm. I can help you up. Come on. Let's see how they stand. Their full height. Kind of limp over to the ziggurat. Is there like an enclosed or covered area at least, or are we just out in the open? Just out in the open at the, at the moment. There's some runes and things like that from the former structures that were here of Svel Inn, but a lot of it was leveled. Uh, I mean, give me a hot, we can sort of knock some shit down. Like we can make some tents or some, uh, oh here, and I just, throw my hole on the ground that's i mean, i don't know that, that's something look we can figure that out um we gotta we gotta we gotta do the uh the slow pu the slow repose on all these people we gotta get them back you know in due time immediate asap get them all back to their temples and if their people can you know we, we have 10 it. days yeah right 10 days Okay, that's sort will, of, you know. I, uh, you do I, see some of the surviving uh, Warforged that were kind of battling around on the kind of outer areas of the, the ziggurat um, in the con kind of construction area. They are starting to kind of wander over um, in various states. And you can see some of the Eladrin from that uh, initial delegation that survived. There's only a few of them, but they also begin to kind of head over. Um, um. I'd look over to Kokani. Do you have gentle repose today? I do, yeah. If you I could. Don't. I will, but I, I don't have I a lot left. I know. I would, but I have nothing. Is there any uh, priority? Cassian. And he heads over. You can see cast gentle repose on Cassian. He will be coming back to Wolfried with us. With diamonds, I can bring him back tomorrow. If he is intact. Um, you watch as Nepi, like, across her face, you see this, almost this, there is a bat. There's like a, a battle 
going on between within her that is very plain on her face. She doesn't have the energy to hide it. Um, you see like grief, loss, pain, her own pain and anguish like right below the surface that is being held so fragilely intact by work. And you see the like high priestess kind of work face go on um, as she just kind of silently moves and begins checking through each of the bodies to make sure to kind of get a sense of being able to inform what kind of magic will be needed to bring these people back if they can be. Like, if are their body parts missing and being able to inform or to be able to, when I can, notify the right people or if I'm going to do this myself, like, nebby has got a big day bringing people back from the dead tomorrow. So I'd like to know what I'm working with. You see... Itune is missing her heart. It's gone. Um, uh, Cassian had his neck broken. Okay. Um, Arturo, but otherwise seems intact? Otherwise seems intact. Okay. Uh, Arturo seemed to have choked on something. Um, and um, the uh, the two Eladrin twins, their bodies were pretty heavily um, destroyed. There's not much left of them. Where was, um, sorry, please continue. No, I think where was Cato, thing. the sun speaker, and all this? Cato was with Kokani and Serpenthus and Magrin in the dome. He's still up. He's still up. Um, you can see okay. it seems like they uh, they were fighting and then kind of took a strategic approach to kind of keep a yep. force wall up. Um, so he is going around. He's helping a lot of the Warforged and the Eladrin that are left. Um, and uh, kind of healing where he can. That seems to be his focus at the moment. Okay. If we can set up some sort of makeshift infirmary um, in one of these buildings. It seems like the Warforged and, and Kato are already kind of starting that process. Yeah, I don't have much that can really help. I'll just sort of head on over to them and be and sort of just be like how can i make myself useful and yeah you head over and as you kind of head over you see um clack has been uh with grimbar a little a ways um you haven't seen them speaking but they have he has had a kind of hand on his paw for a lot of this conversation it seems like they're communing in some ways and you can see that Grumbar does head over as well and begin to kind of shape the earth around some of the rubble to create uh, essentially a structure, a stone structure um, to give them shelter. And you can see Akadi has kind of moved the clouds. And it is, you're getting like, you came over in the morning and it's kind of getting into the day. Um, the clouds have been shifted and the sun is out. How's the color of the world? It is vibrant. Even in this kind of desolate area that was destroyed, you can see the kind of like rich earth and all of that that's been kind of churned up through this whole battle. There is a vibrancy to it. And the water just down at the harbor, you can see has this beautiful shimmering blue color. Kale is doing that thing that do who've gone through a traumatic event where he's sort of got a cloth and a canteen and he's making it wet and he's trying to sort of clean Callie and Finn's face as though that's somehow gonna make things better he's sort of trying to I don't know make them more look okay he's not doing great I think Neppy's uh Passive perception and passive insight is high enough that um, I would notice that. And I would come over and wordlessly kneel down 
on the other side of you and you hear Nepi start singing. It's this sweet, it sounds like halfway between a prayer hymn and a lullaby um, as she pulls out some oils out of her bag in a cloth and passes them to you. And she is singing, she's singing prayer hymns and last rites and joins you and lets you continue your work. over our two friends. You don't speak Infernal, do you? Okay. You don't. Letters takes in the, um, the return of color and the sort of somber nature, despite the majesty of a uh, structure being uh, willed into existence by a Titan. And he's going to reach into his wallet and pull out another folded up piece of paper that he's been carrying for a while. He's going to sort of flatten it out on his chest and lay it down on the ground. And just sort of sit cross-legged with it for an hour and start casting a spell. And as he's sitting there, a forest starts growing all around us as he's going to cast bloom and it's going it's just these like multi hundred year old like redwoods not dissimilar to katona um sort of pop up all around and this rich and vibrant like these incredibly verdant ferns and like morning glories wrapping around uh the trees all in bloom um and there's no animals yet, so it's it's just serene and quiet. Um, but I don't know uh, a certain. Uh, I would hope uh, Majesty uh, returns to the area that might be appropriate of of what's gone down here. As you watch this forest kind of spring up around you as it kind of fully blooms, you hear a soft sound in the distance and you look above as just a soft rain trickles down the whole forest. It doesn't last for very long, but there is this fresh smell that permeates the area, eliminating the scars of the battle. And uh, particularly around where uh, Callie and the rest of the recently deceased have been laid out, just a bed of small wildflowers, um, just a lot of like whites and purples um, are just uh, doing their, their little thin thing. Nice. I, s I see that happen and I look up at letters. What a beautiful effigy. I'm going to do everything I can to bring them back tomorrow, but honoring the death is important. Just think if you're going to try to bring people back, you should do it in a temple. Oh, letters. It was taking up space in my wallet. It wasn't really on brand, so I just, you know, I had to sort of get it out. Uh, Thank you. Everything helps. Speaking of which, it will be on the three of us tomorrow. Mm-hmm. 
So if there's anything deep in your heart, in the dark corners of your soul that you have ever been wanting to say to these two, <laughs> tomorrow will be the time. You got it. I'm going to make myself useful and I'll go off, sort of jog off into the forest and start like collecting, foraging for the, the many plentiful goodies. So whoever eats food, not looking at you, War Forge, uh, you know, will have something to munch. There is a conspicuously high amount of just like oats and barley growing in the undergrowth, which is weird. <laughs> and so see, you know, any botanists around would be like, hmm, that's not usually how that goes. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the situation. The second I would have the opportunity and feel like some semblance of everything is not good, but stable, holding, I would find Kokanee and I would take his hand. Um, I can't be a high priestess right now. I just want to be in the pee for a little bit. And I need coconut. Let's go for a walk. He takes your hand, walks you down to the ocean by the sand. I like collapse into him, and there is some like deep guttural crying that comes from like here. And I would imagine that's the same sound that he heard when Torin died. Yeah, you can see tears streaming down his face as he holds you. You've done well. I think I did everything I could. It was enough. More than. I guess. I don't know. It's hard to say. But it's what we did. I don't want to die again. I don't want not, you to die again either. Not like that. I've. I've never felt like that before. Well, then we will rest assured that it will not happen again. Will it? I hope so. I remember watching you collapse in the ship with Felsu. And I knew then that you would feel that one day. And I hated it. But then I knew it was good that I am your wife. Because I'll always, I'll never stop. Death can't hold me from you. Just be careful. I know. You can't always be there. I know. We should check on the kids. I can't. I can't. All right. He calls Penny, or he calls um, Tish. And the kids are fine. He relays back to you that Temple Philanus was attacked. But the priestesses held them off and were well prepared. And they suffered min minimal casualties. Lots of injured, no deaths. The kids are all right. 
hand. I am sure you feel this as the worship of Arethis grows. That it is hard to be needed everywhere, all at once. Yeah. Thank you for always supporting me. Of course. Thanks for always coming home. Always. You remember what I said in that letter? Nothing could keep me from you and our children. Just like lean into him. He just holds you. I honestly think that we would probably just pass out on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. I was going to sleep by Finnan and Callie. Yeah. Letters, where do you find rest? Sorry. Lennon, what? did you want to say something? I saw you tap your... Yeah, you go first. Uh, he's going to bring back a... He brought out a big basket to go foraging, but Letters is bad at foraging. Even in here, he's like, fuck, I fucking built the place. I can't, I don't know. Can't. Uh, he's uh, he's going to bring back his meager thing. Uh, and uh, um, he's going to head over to Clack at the, just, I assume, like, what's Clack up to? Because that's where Letters is going to be. After Grimbar helped build the structure, um, you saw they, the two of them wandered out a little ways together. And he's sitting with Grimbar, probably about 30 minutes away from everyone. And Grimbar's size has shrunk down to clack size. Looks like a small stone wolf sitting next to him. And again, they're just sitting in silence. But you can see both of Clack's hands are on the ground. Well, I'm not about to interrupt that. Uh, he goes, I can hear you, you know. Oh, Your hooves are loud. Uh, I can feel them in the ground. Uh, Come. Y'all want any berries or nuts? Uh, kind of looks at Grumbar. I think we're okay. Okay, well. Well, I'll come over anyways. Yeah, come sit. I gotta, I gotta shell some of these nuts. <laughs> and I sit down with him. Grumbar is gonna go back to the scar. Oh, for real? Yeah. All right. I mean, you're welcome here anytime. He knows. Cool. He wants to look after uh, his people. Yeah, I know what he, that's like. Uh, He's also going to make a visit to Dresda. <laughs> he wants to stretch his legs a bit. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone's going to be stoked for that. I don't think it's going to be like a big announce his presence kind of thing. Okay, all right. Might Go. be a bit more subtle. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. cool. But... Um, thanks for bringing me along. It's a team effort, dude. Yeah. We wouldn't have gotten here without you. Mm. I wouldn't be here without you. Yeah. Mutual sidekicks. Absolutely. We should get some rest. Yeah, yo, but straight up that when you turn into that wolf, that was fucking dope. Yeah, that was, that was pretty sweet. I admire you for your restraint to not just kick that out at parties. Like, I mean, it's sort of like a sacred thing. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying, if it was me, I it, look, if it was me, I look over at the Grim Bar, I'd be real, uh, uh, real reverent about it. Uh, uh, it's all anyways. right. You, you can bust it out at parties. Why not? <laughs> 
uh, uh, y'all want to sleep on the rock tonight? And I slam my hammer down on the stone I'm sure they're sitting on. Yeah. Oh, well, like, sick. I meld into stone. <laughs> and the three of you meld into stone to rest. <laughs> Kale, you notice something as well as you're sitting there. Callie's mother comes and sits quietly down beside you. You can see she rests her sword in the ground next to Callie's body. She just sits. She does not sleep. She seems like she's in prayer. Am it? Am I with Melora? Yes. You find yourself in a beautiful clearing that is familiar yet foreign as well. You can feel the warmth on your face as the breeze blows through the trees. And you can see in the distance at the other end of this clearing that seems fairly far away, what looks like a small building. And you can see uh, another figure a little ways ahead of you, walking towards the building in the distance. It looks it like Cass? it is. It looks like Cassian Sky Singer. Can I run up to him? Can I catch up? As you run, he seems to get. He always seems to be just a little bit ahead of you. And he like, does he turn around if I call his name? Do you call his name? He stops and he turns and he walks towards you. <laughs> does he get closer? He does. Calliope. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. When you see Kamea next, tell her that I love her. And when she's ready, I'll see her at the chapel. Go ahead. It's my time. How do you know? I don't know how to explain it. Because I'm relieved. I am so sad, but I am relieved to be here. And I don't want to go back. I'm tired, but I'm sad. I know that feeling. It's not easy. It's not easy to walk between life and death. I have been here before. But I know this. Every time I have found myself here again, it feels a bit more like a home. And every time I've died, it's been here. It's never gone away. It's difficult to know when our time is, but this time I'm choosing to stay. I have had a long, beautiful life, and now it's my time to 
give back to the forest that's nourished me for so long. I miss you. I'll see you again. He takes your hands. There's no rush. I'm just tired. Living is exhausting. I feel ready. Perhaps you are. That is up to you. But the ones I love or not. So I don't know. You may never know. Think on it. I will. Trust your heart. She'd sit. Would you like me to sit with you? No, oh, it's okay. I think I have to sit alone. All right. May I hug you? Please. Takes you in a very warm embrace. She just like fall into it. And it is familiar in a lot of ways. And he holds you for a long time. Don't discount the ones you love. He smiles and he turns and you watch him walk across the meadow. She just say? Morning comes. The sun creeps up over the horizon as a mist kind of rises off through the forest. You all come to congregate once more around the cigarette. I'd have gone for a swim in the ocean in the morning. Nice. Wash off the pee the night before, mm. before coming back and put on a fresh set of robes. When you return, you notice a few things. The bodies of the emissaries of the dawn. You see... Cassian's body is no longer there. The ground that his body was resting on, you can see, has begun to grow a new tree, a sapling. It's not as large as the other trees around it. The beautiful hawthorn tree is beginning to grow. You can see the body of Itune, who you saw before was kneeling kind of slumped over. You see her body now is kneeling with her sword down in both hands and her entire body is platinum. She's become a statue. And you can see where the hole where her heart was. You now see there is the head of a dragon. And you can see where the body of Arturo was. All that remains are a pair of dice. There's a 20 and a one. One pair of two 20-sided dice. So is it then just Callie and Finnan left? 
Callie and Finnan. You can see the crystals have come up a little bit more around Finnan's body, but he is still visible. He's able to move around. You can see it's almost like a crystal garden starting to grow around him. As I um, approach the two of them, um, Nippy kind of just wordlessly starts passing out candles um, and pointing where to arrange them. And I light incense and place out a couple prayer mats that I have. He watches Nepi pulls up a shroud and hooks it over her horn so it almost covers her hair coming down. And she pulls the more official, like, covering up over her face so you just see two golden eyes staring back at you from blue skin. All right. Are we ready? One second, and Letters gets his dice, which are just right over here. Would we have leveled up when we slept? Yes, we did. Whew. I'm going to do that after this. I'm, um, I'm going to start with Finnan because this magic required with him is smaller than the magic to bring Kelly back. Kyle, do you have access to Wish today? Um, yes, I do. Would you wish me some diamonds? Was Please. I was sort of hoping to hold on to it. Is all it? Right. Is um, it if that's all right? I am. Um, one sec. I uh. I don't have enough. For, for Finn the and the both of them. Yes. I'm sorry. No, that's that's okay. Um, so the thing about wish is, when I create one of the things, does that still count as, do I still have to roll the percentage save? Because at the bottom it says, the stress of casting a spell to produce any effect other than duplicating a spell. Oh, so I would still have to risk losing no. it. Oh, I don't those, want you right? to have to do that. Uh, I, don't want you I know to we're not me. huge on grave robbing, but... We could probably go through Callie's pockets. She, you know, she's always got a, a sack on her. I have diamonds on her. Did and I not use mine? No. No. Okay. Then I you'd would have. You'd have a set of three hundred on you. Mm -hmm. Kokani also had a set of three hundred, I believe. Okay. He wound it. He used yours because he was panicking, but he had a set of three hundred as well. You left him with one. Okay, so that is minus three hundred. So that's seven hundred. Plus the 300 is back to 1,000. And then Callie set brings me up to 1,300. I need 1,500. How, how much for who? Sorry, just break down who's Finnan is how much? 500 gold pieces worth of diamonds. And Callie will be $1,000, 1,000 gold pieces. Tim, what I sent you, would that work? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um. Are you here? Wait, mm -hmm. well, no, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I mean, I'm not, I don't know Wish personally, but if you can duplicate any spell, maybe uh, uh, Kale takes a crack at Finn and not to come for your brand, Nappy. But, yeah, I, uh, could, I could do that. You want to take a shot at it? I could, uh, Would like to. I could try. Yeah. Happy to help guide you. In. Or should I do the one that's more expensive? Dead. You need to raise dead. You cannot revivify. It is raised dead. Talking mechanically, I know that I think one of the ones you're talking about is a ninth level, which uh, Wish would not. No, true resurrection is mm -hmm. ninth level. I 
don't need that. Which, I just okay, need great. Re- that's 25,000 gold pieces okay. worth of diamonds. Uh, and that's if you've been dead longer than a century. Um, I don't need that. Uh, and that's if you have nothing of the body. Um, I have Callie's body. It's just missing parts. So I cannot do raised den on it. So it must be resurrection, which requires a thousand gold pieces. That's what I mean. But I'm, what I'm saying is if Kale casts resurrection, then he doesn't need a thousand at all. It saves us. Yeah. Extra yeah. Money. Okay. I, Go for it. Leave it. Go. For, leave it. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. You'd see so Nepi. You'd see Raised Nepi. dead on Finnan. Resurrection yes. on Cali. Raised dead by Nepi. Resurrection by Kale. Yes. Right. Okay. You would see Nepi open a prayer book. Bro- prayer book in front of Kale, and she would just be kind of like flipping through pages. And this is strictly just for flavor. I'm gonna cast tongues on Kale. Um, and he's gonna Nepi's going to start essentially reciting the prayers for resurrection she only knows them in I mean, she knows them in common but they don't work that way so I'm going to recite them in infernal and with tongues Kale will be able to replicate them to do everything that I can to help him before I contribute to my part of the ritual for Kelly. Yeah, Kale would just repeat exactly what he's being told. And as you cast Wish, it's as if this flood of knowledge and experience transfers from Nepenthe and her her whole order. It's as if you're witnessing the evolution of her order all at once as you're channeling that into the spell. And as we get to sort of the end of the casting of the spell before Nephi takes over, um, Kale would just lean in so that he could whisper into Callie's ear and he would just say, "Don't, don't make me a liar. Let Nepi take over. Uh, seeing my cue to continue with my next part of the ritual. Um, I'm going to I'm going to use thaumaturgy to make my voice spread around in almost to make it sound like a fuller chorus than I could produce myself. And I am going to start by singing one of the lullabies that I likely would have heard her sing to Jar when we were Mm. on our first way home from when we first found Jar to Wolfreen. And I would use thaumaturgy to kind of break my voice into a round Mm. so that it is like this encompassing singing just circles around Callie, like all of us, and singing along, even though I likely didn't know it at that point because Nepi wouldn't have known any lullabies that weren't in Infernal. And at the end of it, where you are right now, I know that you are being cared for. Your garden is being tended to. I know that peace. I have felt it. Tasted it briefly. And though 
one day there will come a time where that peace is meant solely for you. I know in my heart it is not now. I need you. I am so rarely selfish. You will never hear me say this to anyone other than you, my best friend, but I am quite a selfless person. And I would give you anything you want. But I need you. Not to mention the myriad of other people who need you and whose needs trump mine. Please don't. Please come back. Please don't stay where you are. What kind of check would you like? Ah. Uh... I would accept either a performance check for the lullaby, a persuasion check. I'll take persuasion. I'm better at that. All right. Neppy knows her skills. <laughs> Twenty-four. Sorry. Nice. Twenty-five. Nice. All right. So, Nepenthe adds into the ritual with her piece. Ladders, would you like to go next? Uh, yeah. Um. Uh. uh hey. It's uh. It's ladders. Um. I don't know, man. It's, uh, you know, here we are again, right? <laughs> I wish I, uh, I wish I was a little quicker. So we wouldn't be here, but here we are. Um, I know you're real afraid of watching, uh, you know, everyone else grow old and die because you're some sort of fucking angel or something who lives forever I have a pretty loose grasp of the whole affair um, but uh, sitting on the other end of that is as the one who's probably gonna die well we'll see about that uh, all, all I know is is that watching you die before your time is a ain't a barrel of laughs either If it were up to me, neither of us are here again for a good hot while. Uh, that's your call, man. Uh, I vote come on back, but I can't make you do anything. <laughs> None of us can. Uh, yeah, if, if you want to stick around and have some fun, uh, you know, we're, we, we got your, we're keeping your seat warm. Yeah. All right. What kind of check would you like to make? I think that's a persuasion. I think so too. My billowing cope would, would not give me advantage. You can't look right. cool through the planes. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. 17. Okay. And finally, Kale, as you round out the ritual. I'm not ready for you to be gone. And I am not the only one. I'm one of many. So it's not that I don't believe in gods. It's just that think we can do just as amazing things yeah. and if they try and take you from us I will come and get you myself so, let's just keep it simple Kale would you like to make a persuasion or intimidation check an intimidation check please absolutely yeah. Because that is the only plus 10 I have. And that's what I was going for. <laughs> Definitely sounded like an intimidation check to me. It's like, I got a threatener. That's... <laughs> oh, that's good. That's a 16 on the die plus 10, 26. Okay. All right. So I'm going to roll to see if it succeeds. Callie, as you stand in the meadow, you hear these voices echo through your head. You see almost spirit-like versions of your friends standing around you. You feel the wind start to pick up. You all standing in the forest around her feel the wind start to pick up off the water as the trees begin to move and sway. Callie, you see before you a figure rise up out of the ground. Melora stands before you. You may go if you wish. I do. The chapel will be waiting for you when you're ready. Okay. Now go. Live. <laughs> she takes your face in her hands. And as she steps up to you, she's smaller than you've seen her before, looking up at you. Her face looks older than you've seen before. You can see the deep lines in her green skin. Liv. I would like you to roll a d20 uh, for me, please. Yes. I will. No, adding just a straight d20. This is just a straight d20. It's an 18. Okay. So you feel the wind kind of pick up and you all watch as the wind kind of hits its apex, the trees starting to bend and shift. You hear a crack of lightning through the sky. As you look up, you see Callie's mother, Callista, holding her sword up as a lightning bolt streaks down and strikes the body of Callie. And you watch in this blinding flash kind of pushes your eyesight away. As you come back, you see Callie is breathing once again. And you see the parts of her body that were there, that had been vaporized, you see now reformed. You can see a lot of her armor is destroyed and torn and the skin underneath you see has a new tattoo. You see a forest and a meadow creeping up her arm and her legs. 
Callie, you feel a heat in your left hand. You can feel the ring. Warm. Almost hot, but not painful. You feel the sending stone on your heart. Warm. And the familiar warm breeze hits your face as the wind quiets and you feel yourself catch your breath as your eyes open. You are alive. Immediately put a heal into her. So that's 70 hit points back. You have three levels of exhaustion at the moment. Put some hands on her and give her 10. I look over at Kale. Well done. You did beautifully. Callie, sorry, go ahead. Had a great lead us through it all. And if you would just like lean in and just like nuzzle next to you as we look down at Callie. Callie, as your eyes kind of adjust, you can see just behind your friends in the trees. You see a number of figures extending out, familiar faces. Melora standing with them. And as your eyes come into focus, you watch as they fade into the trees. Hello. He was quite the scare there. Sorry. Don't even. Thank you. <laughs> Always. Always. I'd pick up my sending stone. As you go to speak, I know you're back. Oh. She told me. She did. She did. <clears throat> I love you. I love you. I'm sitting in the grove where we got married. soon, okay? Okay. As soon as I can. <laughs> of course. Of course. Go. Be with them. And I will see you soon. I'll see you soon. I love you. I love you. We do, um, Finnan? Yes. Um. All right. So. Since tongues would technically still be active on Kale. Mm -hmm. I would flip the prayer book to the right page. The next time. Just in case you have to do it. Okay? Remind me to stock you with diamonds. I know you don't need them. But for ceremony's sake, right? Okay. So, um, I am going to start casting um, 
Ray is dead. And as long as I would do a very, very, very thorough check to make sure he is not missing any body parts. He is not missing any body parts. Okay. Because if I, this one does not restore them. So no. he he is fully intact. With the reincarnate, his his heart was um because Kale put the pieces of his heart back in his chest. Um, yeah, no, he looks uh, whole and intact. I would, you would hear, uh, it's a very similar version of the same prayer, but the ritual to cast resurrection that you would have, that Kale would have heard Nepi recite is almost like it's more forceful. There is a, an urgency to it, a pressure, because of how powerful the magic needs to be. Ray's dead is toned down a bit. It is imploring, but not desperate. It is an invitation to return, a, a beckoning without a forceful pull. And look at Kale. I started last time. Would either of you like to start? All right, wake up, asshole. Come on. You're being silly. Uh, uh, we got a lot more work to do. And, uh, you know, if none of us are taking a day off, then you don't get to either. All right, get the fuck up. Come on, let's go. You can make an intimidation check. Yes, please. Thank you very much. That was my thing. Well, I mean, you should have gone first. I don't know what to tell you. You're all just going to intimidate Finn and back to life. <laughs> That's a 19. The right. other plus 10 I have is athletics, so unless I drop into a push-up contest. Sorry. Just uh, do push-ups until you wake up, buddy. Yeah, just do push-ups. <laughs> I can do more push-ups than you, so... Do you want to do that? No, 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 no. <laughs> um... Well, you're still thinking. That is. Yeah. Can I borrow your ring for a moment? Yeah, all right. Which is how it slips his hand off his tail, and as it moves off the tail, a ring uh, materializes. I put it on. And I'm hoping to speak to Rysal mm. or Vokat. Hello. Hello? You're needed for a moment. All right. I'd like you to tell me a story. I'd like to tell you to tell me what you admire most about Relauvin hmm. and what he inspired in you before things turned awful. It is his unwavering optimism. It's almost annoying sometimes, but he can find the good anywhere. And his compassion knows no bounds. I need you to tell him that. I mean, I put the ring on the thing on Finnan's finger. Mm. And what I'm hoping to do here is use what I know of Relauvin through the stories that Finnan has told me to tell the tale of how Finnan grew as a man 
and weave a story of when I met him, young, headstrong, unfathomably stubborn, arrogant, and the beautiful, compassionate, secretly optimistic, sweet, hopeful person that he has become. With Rysel's help, I'd like to use history. Interesting. Yeah, you can make a history check. Because I'm proficient in that, too. Leaves persuasion open to someone else. <laughs> For the record, Yanis, I'm not even proficient in intimidation. I just felt like it. <laughs> Sometimes that's the best way to go. From the head. 21. Okay. Can can Callie see some? Absolutely. Okay. Callie would like <laughs> get up to Finn and Finn and speaks so so uh, Finn and speaks celestial, right? I believe so. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think he does. I'm pretty he for sure. sure. Does. I, okay. Cool. 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 So she'd she'd be speaking in celestial. Um. I was I was where you sit. Lay, stand, just moments, just moments before you. And I'm not sure if you're bouncing and ready to come back and standing there waiting for us to get through our words and just waiting for the on your marks, get set, go. But in the chance that you're not and you're where I stood. Getting on your marks, get set, go on the other side of that gate. And you feel the relief and the weight that has been lifted being on the side that you are now. I get it. I get it, and figuring out when our time is, even though it feels so sure that it's now. I ask that you come back, because I don't think there's anyone that gets it as much as you do, and I need that right now. Because I can't explain that feeling. That is a feeling that I can't explain. Because it doesn't make sense. And I need someone who understands. Because I... I am so ready. I am so ready. But I stand here, so I need you beside me. Also, you have a human growing, and I'm not going to deal with that. All right. I'll have you make a persuasion check, please. And even though you are exhausted, I will say <laughs> with these kinds of checks, I'm not going to impose disadvantage. That's a cool DM right there. You also That's just cool, came yeah. back to life, so I feel like that might have given you advantage, so just kind of... <laughs> um, that's a 28 nice Kel is there anything you'd like to toss in the um there's so much for you to do it's so it's time to make the Aganis name proud you've just gotten that opportunity Too much left to do, Finn. I need your help. Nice. I won't have you make a check um, because it is just three, but for flavor, that was very nice. Uh, so I'm going to roll his resurrection check. Okay. As you watch as you finish your words, you watch the sarasite that is formed over his heart 
begin to glow. And that glow spreads across. You can see where the bits of sericite through his skin start to glow. And the crystal garden around him starts to glow. And you watch as it pulses faster and faster and faster. And you can see the crystals start to grow larger underneath him, almost lifting him up. As you see, it kind of comes to a almost a full point without impaling him. You see it pushes him almost up to standing. And you watch the glow fade as breath returns. And he kind of stumbles forward. You catch him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, that was... My neck is fucking sore. Uh. Neppy would. Wait, wait, wait. Can Go I? Go ahead. I've, yeah. I've, I've been working on it. Yeah. I just want to make sure of I'm doing course. this right. Sorry, but I used all the regular magic fingers on on Callie, so let me just. And I smack him on the back of the head and cure and cast cure wounds <gasps> at first level to see if I do it right. Uh, I'm going to have you make a medicine check alongside this. This is essentially for your chiropractic skills. So, I, really I, was just gonna chi- I was just going to chiropractor him, so good job. Well, I've been it watching. Takes as much takes as much damage as you heal him for. Yeah, yeah this it's could only straight one. up kill him because uh, I am not good at medicine. <laughs> All right. With a minus one. Oh, oh that was cock. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, 16. Okay. 16. He goes, Jesus. That actually feels pretty good. Yeah, it feels about seven hit points good. Yeah, th- thank you. Yeah. Welcome back. The best. Yeah. Oh, I'm tired. I know. I'm hungry, too. Oh, I've got so many. Well, not so many, but I've got quite a few nuts and berries. <laughs> They're see, still good. He kind of looks around. Where Where are we? That ends, too. Huh. All right. We're in... Um, the Grove of Forgiveness. Huh. I like that. You did well. We Thanks. did it. Good. Um, Zubta around here, I should probably say thanks. I think he's... They're off over there. Great. They haven't, they haven't really left yet. Um... Thank you. And he literally puts his arms out for a big group hug. The first time he's ever done that, so we <laughs> take him up on it. It's canon. It's canon. He's not here to say no. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll be right back. And you watch as he kind of heads off looking for a I slap him on the butt and give him another eight hit points. <laughs> Does he sound weird to you guys? Should we be concerned? Yeah, One second, like let scary. me slap him in the tongue. Come here. Get, get out of here. Is no. your mom still there? Yes. You can see she's standing just just behind your group looking. You can see tears streaming down her face. She's just at the edge of the cigarette. I'd like to go over to her. Walk my way over. Just give her a hug. She's she not going to say anything. Picks you up. In a massive embrace. And you're not used to feeling small. small. But in this particular embrace, you feel small in the best way possible. As she lifts you up into the sky. <laughs> and you feel as she puts her hands on your back, you feel your wings extend out behind you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I... When you died, I felt the same grief that I did when I had to leave your father. 
It nearly killed me once. And it nearly killed me again. Well, I'm back. <laughs> I know. I was ready to go and find you. I think Kale would have joined you. Mm -hmm. And probably everyone else. Thank you for choosing to come back. Yeah. I know what the other side is like. It's, it's nice. It is. <laughs> it is. Been there. A lot. The divine realms for a reason. I think, um, I know you, but, but when I choose to stay, let me stay. Of course. I just wanted to see your face one more time. I know I've been away it's for okay. most of your life. I understand why. <laughs> Still, I, know. I want to be more present. Okay. I have certain duties I am bound to but I would like to see you more regularly. I'm usually in the same place. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. There's I'm nothing to be. I have to go. Makes sense. Me too. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. She holds your hand and you watch that electricity kind of ripple off her wings and onto yours. You feel that kind of static tingle. And if you ever need me, <laughs> you just call. I will. Well, never you will. She reaches out and touches your sending stone. Stop. <laughs> and you watch as she carves ever so gently a lightning bolt. <laughs> well, now I will. <laughs> exactly. You watch as she, her wings kind of beat as she flies up above you. I'd fly back down raises her sword and you hear that kind of crack of light and she disappears. <laughs> you head back down to the group. Yeah. As you all stand around in the Grove of Forgiveness. Hmm. We have one more. I have one more for today that I need to try for. We have one more. I need to go to Manta. Yeah, I can get you there. I need to see if she's there. You, uh, anybody got anything else they want to do here? I look at Kokanee. Will you come? All right. <coughs> Let's go get my priestess back. I take out my Rolodex. I take the uh, coaster <laughs> that I took from Manta. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Zim Zalabim. Off we arrive go. in Manta. As you arrive in Manta for the first time, 
you see color. You see the grass, which was once gray, kind of growing outside of the city, is a vibrant green. You can see what once was the temple to the Raven Queen. You now see the kind of ivory white of the mask that once adorned the kind of large face of the temple. You can see the different colors of the stones. There is ribbons of green from vegetation that has grown. And the ground itself is brown, dark, rich brown. And you can see the body of Softly still lying in the courtyard. Walk over to her and I kneel. Can I determine how long she's been dead? Make a medicine check. And I cast guidance on myself as I do so. Neppy is like, there is just prayer, just <laughs> spilling out of her mouth. So much prayer. Oh, that was cocked. 25. Seems like she's been dead a few days. Under 10? Mm hmm. As far as you can tell. I'm going to pull out my last 500 diamonds. I'm going to look at the group. I will need those who knew her. And I will need to take her back to Wolfrey. Is that all right? Uh, yeah. I, uh, okay. Say, uh, <laughs> I will use a spell slot. <laughs> is that, is that Michael Caine? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael, Michael Kale. Kale. Michael Kale. Michael Kale. Michael That's Kale. shard. That's Michael shard, actually. Kale. I can, yeah, I can take us back. Will you take us back to Tempu? Karako, please. Of course. Uh, I'd also I like to say, I feel like uh, the Grove of Mercy is a little better than the Grove of Forgiveness. It just a uh, real quick branding, we, just before we put up the plaque. How do we feel about that Grove of Mercy? Grove of Mercy? Grove of Mercy? mercy. Yeah, Grove of Mercy. Grove of Mercy. That feels better. That feels better. Do you know what, your first idea always is, isn't the best one. Try to think of like maybe the second <laughs> or third. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let them know. And you, Kogany starts casting <laughs> sending. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just before we figure out the t shirts. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Temple Caracal. Caracal. I would put softly in the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's I, assume, I assumed that was the whole point. <laughs> she's an Just to check if she's still there. Let's get out of here. Lift, <laughs> you lift her behind. Shit. Let me go. We can put her in my big hole just because that's slightly more <laughs> dignified than jamming a, a person. The bag into... opens quite a lot. <laughs> Does, it? Um, Does it? Isn't it like a backpack at most? Because mine's a Satchel. ten foot hole. We can at just least j- three of this party have been in the bag shit, at one time or another. So. Yeah, I'm just saying it's mouth. Like I've them. always imagined, we've really had to sort of jam them in there. Like I think it's quite an undignified process. It's absolutely an undignified. Well, we process. can put. That's whatever. Whatever. We just need to get her back to Calico. Yeah, I mean, you know, reverence. <laughs> and I fold it up <laughs> like a duvet cover, which is also quite awkward. Uh, Shall we? Yeah. And we head back to Temple Caracal. Okay. You arrive back at Caracal. Uh, and you see uh, there are a few priestesses there, um, but not as many as there usually are. Trixie is not there. I call her. You see she kind of comes out of one of the back rooms. Oh, sorry. I, I was just getting a bit of sleep. It's it's been a long night. Oh gosh. I know we we had dropped Trixie at Philenis though, hadn't we? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So she's not there. So not there sorry. is good. Not there yeah, is yeah, good. Yeah. Not yeah, there is good. We thought we all one of the other uh, priestesses. <laughs> one of the other priestesses. Sorry, Trixie isn't here. You know That's that. That's right. I know. It's been a, it's been a couple of days. I oh. have brought our sister home, and I will need your help. Your covenant sister. And I take the uh, portable hole and I open it. 
and I bring Softly's body out, and I set her on the obsidian slab. You see as um, some of the other priestesses come around immediately, and you can see their, the tears are already flowing as they all kind of lay hands on, on Softly. And it's interesting because I don't know if wouldn't have seen this before. You would have seen a very rushed version of it when Nepi tried to bring Hade back. But you watch as the priestesses of Nepisiket almost fall into step and move around Softly's body. And you hear the prayers that Nepi has given before, the prayers to raise dead, actually said in unison in like beautiful dulcet tones moved around it's all in infernal and you hear words repeated almost in an echoing a mimicking in honor of softly and how she engages with us everything is echoed between imploring her thanking her for her work honoring her grace for holding softly and admonishing how brave softly has been for so long in service to a goddess she didn't have to follow as i cast raise dead with my last 500 diamonds on softly the other two high priestesses I rolled for them. We succeeded on their checks. Oh, I should. I should. I will have you roll once as well, and then we'll. Sorry, Tim. The other two high priestesses. I was like, did I get replaced? No, 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 the other two priestesses. (laughs) The other two tall priestesses. Tall Tall priestesses. Tall women. The other two stoned princesses. Oh, that's crazy. Priestesses are fucking ripped, dude. Sorry, those are Callie's priestesses. Uh, persuasion. I said, or would you let me roll religion? Yeah, you can roll a religion check. That makes sense. And this... That's going to be a 27. Yeah, nice. Okay. You're going to roll that. And you watch as as the chanting kind of comes to a climax. You see the breath return to softly. And her eyes flutter open and land on you, Nepenthe. And she looks. Hi, priestess. Hello. Hello. Softly, sorry. No. You have nothing, nothing to apologize for, Covenant Sister. Nothing. Nothing. Priestess, softly discovered. I, I gathered as much. I'm sorry I was not there in time. Sorry I was not faster, and I'm sorry that you, it is I am the one who am in service to you. My priestess, softly put- service protected me and my family. You protected her grace. You served her when you didn't have to, when it would have been easiest to turn your back and walk away, let it go. And you stayed. You stayed in her light. So you had to come back. And I am so gracious you did. Softly gracious, my priestess. Softly protect. I know. You have done your duty tenfold. You bow in reverence simply now to her grace and no one else. Softly bow. And she looks around at all of you, all the priestesses. She reaches her hands up. She 
touches each one. Softly, Belle. Welcome home. Softly home. Finally. Finally. Finally home. Put some healing into her as well. She moves to sit up. We all would. Everybody would, as much as the the priestesses Mm -hmm. have. Yeah. You see that kind of rejuvenation wash over her. She does look exhausted as well. Home. Any of the others? We shall. Are they all? Are they gone? We should gone. Others gone. Left or dead? Left. And you watch as she moves over to one of the candles. And you can see she kind of moves her hand through to cover the light. She moves her other hand in the shadow. Gone. To the shadow fell. Others. Wisha. Shadow fell. Gone. If they ever contact you again, any of them, and they wish to come back. We welcome them with open arms, with no judgment, no persecution. We share home, mm. Shadowfell. And I hope she and the others find their peace. Even if it is in shadow, sometimes there is comfort in the shade. Hmm. She bows, and you see she moves over to the shrine. She bows her head. She begins to pray. I leave her in her peace. I have interfered in her life enough. Thank you, everyone. I couldn't have left her. I appreciate it. Shall we go home? I think so. There is probably more work to do in Svelin, but I... I don't know if I have the taste for it right now. (laughs) There's always more work. Is there? I think we kind of did the thing, team. Like, I know we're all, like, exhausted from, you know, almost shedding our mortal coil or whatever, (laughs) but... We fucking won, baby. Like, like, right? We're she done did the banishing with all the titans. We don't have to worry about the vengeance anymore. Fucking Raven's Gate. Does it look different, Tim? It's been destroyed. It's essentially or oh, your um. Yeah, the the banishing totem. Yeah. Uh, no, it looks the same. It looks the same, but you notice something else. You notice on the hilt of your doom tube, there is a symbol of Nephthysicate that wasn't there before. I'm attuned to it. Mm -hmm. So would I notice that there's any difference? It seems like it has also become a seal. Cool. That's really cool. Neppy does a, uh... It's like it should be really smooth. Gun, like a gun, flick around. Like a sleight of hand check. 
Oh not super smooth. I'm gonna. Well, say we'll that. see. Let the dice decide. Let the dice tell the out, story. As you baby. walk out of the. To holster you it. Fumble your gun. <laughs> Shut it up. Breaks the seal. Velsum returns. Okay. Velsum. <laughs> With a plus two. It's a fourteen. Okay. Vaguely it's cool. Not, it's vaguely cool. Yes. Um, Callie, as you touch your wedding ring with your finger, mm. you also feel that there is something that was not there before. <gasps> oh, shit. As you can see, a small um, inscription or a uh, small image that's been carved into the bottom, the symbol of Melora. It was not there before. Oh, shit. The wedding ring is a seal as well. Letters gives himself a pat down. <laughs> you hear um, some jingling in your pocket from your brass knuckles, which I assume you still carry on you. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're crystal knuckles because it's crystal a, knuckles, it's a crystal right. focus. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> um, and you notice that there is the symbol of Kruha. Type. Type, 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 type. Red. Too does Kokanese does Kokanese have anything on it? He, uh, yes. As he kind of he looks at all of you, checking out all of your <laughs> stuff. He kind of looks at himself, and he looks down, and he kind of takes his long gun, and there is a symbol of a Raphis that was not there before on the butt of the gun as well. Gale checks all of his stuff, just curious because he doesn't worship any gods, whether or not there would, would show up on it, if it did show up. As you're kind of looking through your stuff, you hear a voice in your head. Kayu, I need to speak with you. Can you come by the shop? Yeah, I've got, um, we do have some stuff to talk about. I'll be there soon. And that's where we're going to end it tonight. Oh! Sorry, we didn't take a break. That's okay. <laughs> oh, we're just ending it there. Yeah, that's where we're going to end it tonight. Oh, filthy. <laughs> Should we do our little level up stuff now that we've all yes, leveled up to 18? I think that's a great idea. Can end off our little session doing a little level up. Say what we level got. Level ups. And thanks for the raid, Mad Bird. Kaka. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh so nice. Want to shout cool. out all the critters who joined were, us? Yeah, thank you, you so much. All the folks oh, from Dimension by. Twenty who have just left, drop out, and just come over here. Thank you so much Dork for Tales. coming in. Good to see y'all. We love you, dorks. It's amazing to be number one in D&D. &D. Uh, oh, this joke doesn't make sense if you weren't here from the start. We're not live right now. This is a recording. <laughs> we duped you. <laughs> we duped you. We're You're a chump. <laughs> oh, <laughs> They're no. not chumps. They've all just been crying through okay. the session just as okay. we have. Wait a, wait a day a... later. <gasps> Ooh, I get an ability score? No, I don't. No, I don't. Um, yeah, yes, I do. level 18 yes, I do. now. So whatever Some comes at 18. Or improvement. There we go. 30 feet. My aura oh, is 30 that's feet. Huge. Oh, that's such good news. That's Rather 30 than 10 feet. feet. Not Ooh. 10 feet. Shoot. 30. That's massive. Jeez. I get an extra use of a channel divinity, which mm. is pretty intense. I think my channel divinity gets bumped up to a different uh, CR as well. I will double check that. And I get an extra fifth level spell, which is nice. I don't get too much. My ability store improvement comes next level. But Minus, yeah, minus my. Oh, I gotta uh, roll some hit dice. I gotta roll. Or I'm roll some dice dice. into druid. <laughs> I was gonna be like, what? Dip in a toe. Purely for <laughs> sex stuff with you know, Adonis. You know what's really, oh you know what's God. really interesting is the fact that because my wisdom is so low, there is so little that I'm allowed to multi class into. <laughs> oh you can gosh. get involved in rogue. You can get involved in rogue. I can do rogue, warlock, paladin, fighter, bard, barbarian. But there's so many that I cannot do. Because your wisdom. I get to be in a funny place because I'm level 16 wizard and level two paladin. Right. Um, so and cool. so I get a ninth level spell slot, but I know zero ninth level spells. Right, uh, he, 
because you used the one scroll you had. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know any ninth level slot, <laughs> but I can now ninth level slot, so I can upcast a magic missile, nice. uh, really Whoa. big style. But you can go learn some ninth level spells, can't you? I can't. No, because I've got two levels of paladin, which count as one level of caster. So I count as having like uh, six. anyway, you know, it's it's multi class fun. Uh, but at level sixteen, I do get it. for wizard. I get a feat, and I'm taking uh, my second resilient feat to give me uh, proficiency in charisma saving throws, nice. which nice. also boosts yeah. uh, my charisma all round, which is a symbol of the which boosts all my paladin spells which is a is a is a little narrative kissing mechanics mm. as oh, letters is mm, brain mm, magic mm, supports his uh uh gut magic and and uh, vice versa so much smooching happening love that the love narrative and mechanics kissing. just won't stop kissing they're making out so hard and that means I when did. he tensors transformation he's got proficiency in all his saves he's a little <laughs> turtle i get to uh, Clockwork Cavalcade, which is a fun Clockwork Soul thing, Very which fun. will be which will be fun. I'm, I'm gonna, not not going to give away too much because it'll be fun to have it pop up and when it's needed. But I also get to change one spell. Whoa, mm-hmm. lucky nice. dog! Um, and I changed a cantrip. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'll be fun to see. Oh, now the tough feat lets me do some stuff with hit points if I remember correctly. You get two extra hit points per level. I get two extra mm. hit points. Okay, well, I didn't take those last levels, so I'm actually bump okay. to bump to plus the six that I just rolled. So that's a plus 10 to what I am at now, which is nice. very nice to me. That's very nice. So I do like the tough feet. Um, I don't think I get anything else. Oh, uh, my death shadow has shattered. Right, it's gone. I can't. It's gone. Now you I'm get to not, attune to something else. I'm not immune to necrotic damage anymore, y'all. Ooh. That's just the just resistant, right? Or nope, nope, no. Nope. Sick. I'm. You can get leprosy like just like the rest of us. I can. Oh, to erase this in my book, Tim. I'm still resistant hurt, to it. Hurts me. I know. You were born resistant to it. I was born resistant to it, baby. Because I born this way, baby. Because I didn't tell you what I what my thing does. I will tell you what spell I switched. Yeah. I took the cantrip hamstring oh hamstring what the is fuck a fun is that hamstring. i haven't heard of it so i can i can modify it to give me um to make it a bonus action instead of an action it seems like a pretty useless spell um, i create an arrow of eldritch energy and send it at a target person they only take 44 damage but on a hit uh they can't take reactions until the end of its next turn oh the so anti counter spell game. Yeah, exactly. So I can hit them and with a hamstring as my bonus action at the end of my turn, I add two D ten fire damage because I've made it a bonus action instead mm-hmm. of an action. I've used meta magic. And then you can then leave it space without a counter attack. You can they can't bro. counter can't spell. Ca- it can't counter spell. Like it essentially loses. What is that hamstring stuff? from? No one no one can be Oh my gosh, 30 feet? That means I, I can be maybe up it's fighting a, something. Maybe it's from a thing we don't use. Yeah. And you all get the plus four, but also none of you can be frightened by anything. If That's I'm 30 great feet from you. By anything. Like it's- to erase necrotic immunity from my book is hurting me. Do you want some white out so it's still there, but not? Mm. No, I don't. Do That's way worse. Want to be Callie instead. No, I'm good. Team, I'm not going to tell you which spells I got because here's the thing: I got ninth level slots, which just means I get to cast eighth level spells because I've been doing fucking Simba all the time, and there are some pretty buck wild, but also extremely on brand eighth level spells <laughs> that I uh, that are also quite situational, and uh, we'll just let that baby be actionable and at the table. That's Beautiful. amazing. Um, holy bananas! And I know uh, what do uh, warlocks get? Some fun stuff at level 18 you have to look at what the i think he gets thing. a new invocation or something yeah yeah i don't know if there's any new of his new um packed stuff um but that's really exciting awesome. um y'all thank you so much for for being here with us tonight uh as we feel a lot of feelings as we were in our feelings a lot for this session um which seems fitting for the follow-up of last session um thank you all for 101 episodes which is 
bonkers that we're in the triple digits. <gasps> it's our Zoe 101 episode. It's our Zoe 101 episode. Did you catch all our subtle Zoe 101 references? <laughs> So I, I spent many. so long so many. watching all of Zoe 101. That's what show, you've right? been doing? That's what you've been show. doing when you... <laughs> yeah, I needed to get all those references in. Wow. In this episode, so. um, thank you awesome. to all of you who uh, actually potentially rated into us this evening. Thank you for any new followers that are there. Uh, thank you for coming in for, if you're here for the first time tonight. And thank you for everyone who has been here for a long time. Um, we will be back on Wednesday. Uh, with our charity uh, one shot uh, breaking point benefiting planned parenthood um, please come stick around uh, or please please come hang out for that um, we're really excited to bring it to you it's going to be a really fun time uh, I'm pretty sure all of the, the characters are evil uh, so it's going to be very very fun this will be the first evil fully truly evil one shot that I have run it'll be great um, and there'll be some giveaways uh, from our dear friends at critical role so please 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 come hang out we are going to raid tonight I don't, I don't know who we're going to raid. We're going to raid somebody fun. Um, we'll probably drop that in the chat, but what we're going to do is we're going to stick around in an outro screen. Um, so wait there uh, for the raiders. W what I've really loved doing is going, finding a really, really small stream that has like five people in it and then just bringing all of us over and showing some love. So our mods will put up or myself will put up the raid message in the chat. Uh, Blackwater wants you to be safe. Um, so uh, please stick around for that. Um, I don't have any other announcements tonight, but... Imagining that image in like physical space, like just like one person chilling, playing video games as like five people sitting in the <laughs> living room and just like having a good time. And then just like 60 people kick in the door. Like, what up, Blackwater Santa? Be safe. Be safe, dudes. And they fucking like pump the music and like one of those beach balls just it's starts getting party. passed around. I know. Bring the party. Fuck yeah, dudes. Oh, Fuck yeah, dudes. Um, yeah. So if your friends are dead, <laughs> I don't know. So no, keep friends. digging. You'll find Thank the gold. You so much. And you got to reach down deep in your heart to tell them something. You got to tell them to be, be safe. safe. Have a wonderful night, everyone. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. 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 Oh.